Hello, I'm Dennis Neal, and we're here at the Fifth International Vatican Conference, and we're speaking today with Dr. Samarth Kulkari about the amazing medical technology known as CRISPR. Thanks for being here. First, let's just start with the Vatican Conference. So many different experts from so many different fields, whereas a lot of medical conferences are very narrow and focused on just specifics. How does this big cross-discipline approach, how is that important? Uh, thank you, Dennis. Th this conference uh, is is terrific, and I really enjoy it. Um, the really important thing about this conference is that there are people from different disciplines coming together to have dialogue and discussion around how to change medicine or how to embrace this changing nature of medicine. Um, for instance, you know, with CRISPR-Cas9, we're changing how we think about treating patients, uh, the type of diseases we're trying to treat. Um, and that requires the regulators, the health systems, um, people in, in politics, people in education to all come together to, to bring, make this a reality and bring this to patients across the globe. Um, and having the leading figures across different disciplines come together in this mind meld to understand how to transform the world and how to, how to embrace technology to me is very powerful. We just heard you say that the first 10 patients treated with CRISPR therapy have been all but cured. Their symptoms have disappeared. One of those diseases was sickle cell anemia. Tell us the next diseases that are likely to get targeted with CRISPR. Last year, we showed data for 10 patients treated with uh, severe sickle cell disease and severe thalassemia, and the data were truly remarkable. All 10 of these patients came in with severe symptoms, and after treatment with CTX001, uh, they were essentially symptom-free. Uh, we've now followed these patients for a while, and this effect seems to be durable. So it's very promising uh, for patients suffering from these diseases. What's next? I mean, this is just the start. I mean, we could go into several rare diseases, but also common diseases. We have clinical trials now going in the field of cancer, uh, where we use smart, intelligent immune cells uh, that can recognize and kill the cancer. Uh, in heart disease, where we can regenerate uh, the heart, uh, and even neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, so the sky's the limit for this technology platform, uh, and I think we're going to see many more medicines and trials that are starting across a range of indications over the next few years. Okay. Right now, if I have this right, CRISPR therapy involves extracting cells, bone marrow, let's say, from the patient. Then you treat the cells in the lab and retrain them to do with these new instructions, you put them back in. How soon will we see CRISPR to where you just take cells that you invent and you put them into the patient without having to go through a bone marrow transplant or some invasive extraction first? Uh, I think very soon. I think in our cancer trials now already, uh, we don't have to do a transplant procedure. We take these intelligent immune cells and simply inject these into the, into the patient uh, at the time of treatment. Uh, in, with our type one diabetes program, we take stem cells that have been programmed to create islet cells or pancreatic cells uh, that can produce insulin in response to glucose. We put them in a device and simply implant them into the patient under, in, under their skin. Uh, so these are becoming more and more straightforward procedures to put these smart medicines or smart cells into the patient to do their job. Last question. As much progress has been made since this CRISPR was invented maybe 10 years ago, compare it with how much progress we'll make in the next 10 years. I think the technology cycle speed here is just getting faster. This is sort of like a flywheel. Once you gain momentum, you're going to see more and more come out of this technology platform. In fact, now not only do you have one or two companies working on this platform, you have number of labs around the world that are working across different diseases. And what's also happening is a convergence of different technologies, whether it's mRNA that was used in the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, together with CRISPR-Cas9 or viral technology that have been used in gene therapies, they're all coming together. And I think we're going to see uh, clinical trials in tens of diseases over the next five years and medicines across a number of different indications approved uh, 10 10 do dozen years out and uh, a nearly uh, a big portion of how we think about medicines in the pharma market is going to be all about 
um, one-time therapies that can be potential cures. All right. Thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Samarth Kulkarni. Thank you very much.